Wala na. Sige, kung wala na, uh, let us start the things that we are going to discuss this afternoon. So, supposedly, we are going to discuss the simplex method in continuation with the linear programming. So, basically, guys, yung simplex lang, that is why some of the books, yung simplex, uh, simplex basically is a method of way to solve the to solve a linear programming problem. Uh, normally, yung simplex the discussion, the simplex method of solving a linear programming problems are on the appendix, appendix ba? part of the appendix. Kasi uh, medyo mahirap yung solution, medyo mahirap yung, medyo mahirap yung, or complicated. Kung medyo nahirapan kayo dito sa linear programming natin, an algebraic way, siguro kung mga uh, times two siguro. <laughs> so medyo times two yung calculations na dapat natin gawin to use the simplex method. So that is why I decided, uh, but normally the important thing of the simplex method is this is the foundation of how are we going to solve the a programming application, linear programming application with a lot of constraints. Kasi in real life guys, in real practice, most of the time yung constraints na nandun in a particular problem, marami yun. Hindi lang yan isa, aabot lang yan ng anim pito. So if you're going to do that, and then if you're going to graph the constraints, all of those constraints, okay lang sana, pag medyo konti lang yung constraints, you can graph that one, you create a line and then do that. But in some cases na medyo marami na yung constraints natin, 6, 7, more than 10, Marami na yan. It is very difficult to do it in a graphical way. So that is why we have to do it. We have to propose to do it in uh, in, in an alternative or other way. So that is why yung simplex method. So simplex method is normally used when uh, yung mga applications natin, gaya ng QM, yung Excel. So basically, I decided that uh, instead of solving this one manually, yung linear program, kasi guys, ito yung concern na, this is applied management science. As much as, 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 much as possible, this is not uh, a, a solving, a, a mathematics class that we're going to solve as much as possible na napakahaba yung solutions natin. Yung ginawa lang natin, yung linear programming, yung graphical solution natin, just to give you a highlight and how yung foundation of linear programming, how to solve a linear programming. But basically, Basically, if we're going to complicate the mathematical calculations natin, masyadong mahihirapan tayo. And then take note guys, pag masyadong mahihirapan na tayo, we will not be able to really appreciate the essence of that particular tool. So that is why I decided na instead of doing a simplex or linear programming application in a manual way, I decided that this afternoon we are going to discuss it using the Excel QM. Okay, or we are going to use the Excel. Pwede naman tayo mag-Excel the Excel. So that is why <laughs> when we will be having a problem, we will discuss two problems related to finance or related to accountancy or related to at least related related sa course natin. Okay, e para at least dili po kayo layo. We will try to solve two problems there. Okay, managerial problems at saka investment problems. Okay, and then we will not solve it using a manual, yung, uh, using uh, solve, solve the manual. Uh, we, I will discuss the, this one, I will discuss the problem in the book, as what you can see, may libro tayo dito. So, I will guide you. Okay, ito yung paulit-ulit ko sinasabi sa inyo guys, that you really have to read the book. Kasi, uh, later on, I think one of the lessons that uh, I learned during this pandemic is, Yung independent learning, very important, very important that you have to learn on your own. Okay? So, yan siguro yung, yung, yung one of the things that I appreciate when, when I was a, an undergrad student sa engineering sa UC namin. Kasi yung mga professors namin during that time, they really don't care. Okay? They really don't care if the students really understood the problem, uh, un understood the lessons. They just want to deliver the lessons and then discuss the lessons. Bala na mo. And then later on, later on, our professors will ask us during the class, did you understand the topic? Uh, wala man may choice. Yes, sir. Uh, they then dismiss tayo. Okay? And then, kahit hindi na marunong magturo yung mga professors namin during our time, okay? And then, uh, wala po may mabuhat. Different from in Ateneo kasi... Students are empowered for yeah, feedback natin, di ba? Uh, yung mga feedback ng mga students natin, nagbibigay kayo ng feedback kayo how, how the professors, how your professors are teaching the course or something like that. And then the management will be evaluating the feedback from, from new students. But in USEP during our time, that is during our time, very seldom lang yung mangyayari na may professor na uh, wala, wala na next sem or something like that because 
tenured professors kasi yan sila. So, mahirap yan. So, basically, you will still meet those, your professor, yung professor mo from first year hanggang fifth year. Aabot pa yan. Kikita-kita, gyapon mo na. So, during my experience, most of the times, uh, I don't learn from our lessons. Uh, before I go to our classroom, siguro, before we start the course, for example, uh, next semester, we will have integral calculus. Before the start of that, uh, kasi, di ba, marami naman kayong subjects for that particular semester. So, hanapin ko yung pinakamahirap. So, canvas tayo sa mga kuya-kuya, mga ate-ate, di ba, kuya. <laughs> so, can, uh, so, tanungin mo yung mga kuya, yung pinakamahirap na subject yan, yung maraming bumapagsak is integral calculus. So, ahead of time, before the start of the course, uh, three chapters ahead na kuana sa among discussion. So basically, when we are going to start the, the topic, when we are going to start the discussions, ang nangyayari na lang during the one is just to verify kung tama ba yung understanding ko on this particular topic. And then later on, I will be asking some questions, yung mga hindi ko masyadong naintindihan when I, I'm reading the book. And then later on, I really appreciate that one kasi very important to you guys, later on kasi pag nasa trabaho na kayo, Everything. Hindi kayo ituturo. Yung mga uh, seniors nyo, for example, you have some seniors, you have some supervisors, maybe they will just teach you some stuff. But later on, they will let you discover the whole process. They will not teach you everything. Okay? Why why, why I'm going to teach you everything? Eh, pinaghirapan ko yan. Yung especially for the engineering guys, yung mga sa amin, sa, sa aming field. For example, if you're going to develop a project, if you're going to, for example, in my case, if I'm going to develop a project, if I'm going to develop an application, so, hindi pwede na ibibigay ko sa inyo yung source code ko and then ganito yung gawin mo. So, madali lang yan. So, there should be a trade secret. Okay? Maybe I will give you the, the fundamentals. Okay? Maybe I will give you the fundamentals but not all. So, yan, yan. So, what I'm trying to say here is basically, basically, it is very important that as early as now, you have to develop a skill, uh, you have to develop your skill of learning something on your own, especially when you will be reading a book. And then, yung advice ko, yung mga previous students ko, and then some of my classmates, kasi during our time, kami mong mga lalaki ato dito, ang naga classic classic eh, syempre, dili man nakasabot ang mong mga, prof, among mga ubang subjects, so, ulihanay may ana, nag-tutorial. So, Ang ginabuhat na ko, Ana, guys, yung advice ko always to my students and my uh, fellow classmates long time ago is, uh, kasi there are some books, di ba? There are some books na mahirap intindihin. There are some books na yung approach nila on uh, to discuss this certain topic is very different from the approach of other authors. So that is why uh, I advise them that you have to choose an author, author of the particular book, as you choose a friend. Okay, as you choose a friend. Choose an author as you choose a friend. Kasi for example, in this particular case here, for example, etong si Render, si Hale, at saka yung et al. So, when I am reading their book, very user-friendly on my own, but probably, on my end, mad madali lang ito basahin. But siguro on your case, uh, yung approach niya is iba. So, maybe you can try to read another book. Okay, although this is the main reference book that we are going to use for this class, Oh, it, it is very good. It is very good practice to read some other books. Okay? So, that is why in our lessons this afternoon, sus, sa kaoras na. So, pag-usapan natin yung application of linear programming using an Excel. Excel QM ang tawag natin dito. Okay, please confirm if you can see the screen. Yung Excel ko dito, Excel sheet. Can you see my Excel? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. So, as of now ngayon, as of now, wala kayong makita dito ng Excel QM. So, ang gagawin nyo is you are going to open this one. Okay, open this one. And then this is from Mac. If you are going to use the, uh, if you are going to use yung Windows, pag yung computer nyo is Windows, mas maganda. <laughs> mas maganda. Kasi you are go, you will be able to download yung Excel QM na program. But, Pag Mac kayo, uh, diri lagi ta sa Excel, gita ani taman. But the result is still the same. Okay? But the result is, will, will still be the same. Okay, so wala tayong choice. You have to close this one first, okay, for Excel. And then, double-click mo lang to. I will be sending the link later on, okay? Double-click mo lang yan. And then, may lalabas dito na are going to enable macros. Enable mo lang yung macros. Okay, and then may lalabas na ganito. Oy, pwede ba drag? Then enable macros again. And then may lalabas na ganito. 
So basically, mag-open lang yung Excel mo. But as what you can see na tab, meron ng Excel QM. Okay? Meron ng Excel QM. And then dito sa Excel QM natin, we can do by chapters or by menu. So in this particular case here, we can do the linear programming. Okay? So if you're going to click the linear programming here, eto na yung sabi ko sa inyo na in linear programming problem guys sa madaling istorya guys ha, sa madaling usapan natin dito the most important thing in doing a linear programming problem is you really have to understand the problem to create the objective function and then to create the constraints kahit in a tabular form in a tabular form or mas maganda if you can create it in a mathematical form mathematical expression and then let the computer do the solving for that particular problem So, ganyan lang yan. So, ibig sabihin, pag may mga problems tayo dito sa linear programming sa actual na or when you will be a manager supervisor in the future, hindi na mo mag-solve so graphical methods. Okay? We will be using this as software here, yung Excel QM. So, ang gagawin mo lang, okay, let's say, for example, two. Uh, let's try to solve the problem yung last time natin na problem para at least ma-appreciate natin yung Excel QM, yung flare uh, furniture. Okay, and then let's try to solve other problems later on na medyo mahirap. Mas maganda yung isang, uh, yung Excel Q, uh, yung QM for Windows, guys, kasi may graph na lalabas. Oo, but I cannot use this one. Ayun lang, ha? Hanapin natin yung graphical constraints. Oo, oh, ito, ito. Okay, so last time, guys, diba, ito yung problem na na-solve natin. Okay, we want to identify Here, okay, this is the maximize the profit. And then I think the answer here is 30 and 40. Tama ba yun? Let's try, let's check it out. 30 and 40. Tingnan natin. And then, yeah, the answer should be... Ano ba yung answer natin dito? T is... Ah, tables is 30 and then chairs is 40. Okay? So, using the the graphical methods, 30, 40. Okay? 30, 40. So, paano ba natin gamitin yung Excel QM natin, guys? So, later on, we will be having a quiz. Kahit graphical pa yan, you can use the Excel first. And then later on, you write the solution. At, at, at least, you already know the answer. As long as tama yung ginawa mo na constraints. Objective function and then the constraints. Sana yun? Ito. Okay. So now, let's try to put this one in our, uh, solve this one using the Excel QM that we have here. So maximize the profit and then we have tables and chairs. Balik tayo dito sa yung lumabas na form na ito. Okay. So let's have this one, uh, flare. I think flare. No, flare. And then the enter the constraints so although we have the non-negativity constraints here this is the first non-negativity the second non-negativity so dito sa excel qm natin hindi na natin to include so in this particular case here although you can also include this one you can also include that one pero i think the the result will still be the same kahit dalawa lang yung constraints na ilagay natin dito okay so number of constraints dalawa okay take note guys take note again this is very important sa algebra natin okay it would be very impossible to solve algebraic expressions algebraic expression kung tatlo yung di ba number of unknowns should be equal at least number of unknowns equal to number of variables that you're going to solve for example eto dalawa yung variables natin t at saka c so in order to solve two unknowns we have we need to have Two equations, two equations, two unknowns, two unknowns, two equations. But in this particular case here, this is an inequality. So at least if you have two unknowns in this particular case here, tables and chairs, very important. If you have tables and chairs, you should have at least, at least two constraints. So hindi pwede na isa lang yung constraint mo in this particular case. So that is why you cannot lower the number of constraints here to one. Okay, so that is why at the name number of constraints niya is... Uh, two, the minimum. And then the number of variables that we are going to solve in this problem, dalawa din. The T and then the C. And then, lagay lang natin to na X. X. Okay, and then, what is the objective of this particular problem? We are going to maximize. Di ba? Maximize. So, click mo lang yung okay. Okay. 
ah. Loading. Yan. So, lalabas tong, ah, uh, ito na yan. So, if you're going to fill up this this uh, sheet here, ito lang yung kailangan mong i-fill up, guys. Ito may color na ito. Okay? So, maximize that this is the goal of this particular problem. What are the things that we are going to maximize? So in this particular case here, the X1 here will be the T, and then the X2 will be the C. So, 70 at saka 50. So, 70 saka 50. Uh, so, 70 at saka 50, yung X1 at saka X2. And then yung constraints natin dito, we have the 4, 40, 3C. 40, and then 3C. Okay, baba natin to. And then, yung sa right-hand side niya, 240, less than 240. So you can change this one, less than, greater than, sa keyboard mo na. Okay? And then dito sa baba, yung second constraint natin, yung sa varnishing, at uh, sa painting at saka sa varnishing, 2T1. Okay? And then dito 1. And then dito 100. Okay? And then yun. Tapos na. And then just click this Run Excel Solver. Click mo lang yan. Oh. Oh. Yan lang. Dapat may lalabas dyan. Oh, this one, this is one of the problems sa Excel, guys, if you're going to use macro. Oh. And then may lalabas na ganito on my end. Uh, keep the silver solution. Okay lang yan. Ah. So, dito na, dito nyo na makita yung result. Oh, di ba? So, automatic na. Ah, dito nga sa baba, may makita ka na equation. So, maximize. Ito yung objective function natin. Uh, 70x and uh, 70y. xy lang yung ginamit niya dito. Subject to these constraints here. Okay? So, makita mo na yan, yung results dito, yung variables natin. We need to produce 20x1 with this in the particular case here, the tables. So, as simple as that. And then, yung chairs natin will be 40. So, you need to produce 30 tables and then 40 chairs to maximize the profit at 4,100. And I think this is the same result that we had yung sa last discussion natin. Sir, dali naman lagi kayo na. Of course, dali lang kayo. Take note, guys, yung class natin dito will is applied management science. So, as much as possible, eto lang ha, uh, siguro some of your professors, the other professors of this quantitative will uh, will like to do it in a manual way. But in my case, para sa atin kasi dito guys, apply, applied management science, that is why as much as possible, we have to understand the problem and then we have to solve this problem as if na we are already in a supervisor level, management level. So para pang master level na tayo dito. Okay? So given this particular problem, automatic ganyan na yan. Okay, so hindi na hindi ka na mag-solve solve, mag map map ng ganyan ganyan ganyan. Okay, but the, it is very important that you have to understand the basic concept na ah doon pala galing 'yon. Ang ibig sabihin kasi if you're going to be asked, if you're going to defend, how did you come up with this 30 and 40? It is very good that you can justify your answer by explaining the theory of how this linear programming problem is being solved. Okay? So, simple. Next. Klaro ba? Well, let me ask someone. Si Sile. Na Sireno. Hello, sir. Hi, Sile. Klaro ba, Sile? Klaro, sir, pero medyo gamay. Hindi na kaya na ako siya maklaro sa akong screen, sir. Kaya medyo gamay itong kaganina, good, sir, before anin sa Excel. Okay, ne. Klaro na. Ah, yes po, sir. Katong before anak, sir. Katong nice flare. Katong before good anin na data, sir. Okay, ne. Katong... Pinakauna pa yun, sir, itong first step. First step? Katong naagoy flare, sir, nga, yung butang ni mo ang pila ka variable. Ah, constraints. Okay, sige, sige. Katong yung sige, kayo maklaro ka ganina. Pero okay wala naman, may, sir. Oo, oh, oh, wala may zoom in, good din ni good. Ah, sige, try natin next time when we will be solving another problem. Pero so far, sa pag-input natin dito sila, okay lang? Yes po, sir. Okay, madali lang, no? Compared to graphical? Medyo, sir. Huh? Oh, oh, as long? Oh, mas elisod mo ko itong graph. Okay, mag-solve-solve ko kag-algebra, di ba? Yes po. 
So in this case here, as long as you got the right objective function and then the right constraints, the right number of constraints, you will come up with the right answer. Okay? So pwede sa next quiz natin dito, maghatag siyong pulo ka buok. <laughs> pulo or lima ka buok. Diba? Dali naman na kayo mag-inputan eh. Okay? So later na natin yung decide yung quiz. Okay. So any other questions? Questions or clarifications first before we proceed with the next examples? Questions, clarifications about this Excel QM? Dali lang man siya gamitin, guys. And then, pag mag-usap na po ka, you go back with the by chapter here. You can go the by chapter. Oh, by chapter. Ito yung lalabas. May table na ganyan. Uh, fun size. Oh, may table na ganyan. Or you can do this one dito sa Excel QM natin. A QM menu. And then, you can check the linear programming here. Okay, you can also do that. Oh, ulit natin linear programming and then may lalabas ulit na ganyan ah uh, wala yatang ilang oh, ayaw niya talaga okay so yan so let's try to solve another problem here na medyo at least related sa inyo guys para at least we can appreciate this one yung related sa accountancy or related to investment to tie sa table of contents. <clears throat> guys, pag may question kay guys, ha, uh, please, uh, you can interrupt the discussion. So let's have this one, the financial applications. <clears throat> okay, so dito tayo sa portfolio selection. For example, uh, ito, a problem frequently encountered by managers or, or, or banks of banks, mutual funds, investment services, and insurance companies is the selection of the specific investment from among the wide variety of uh, alternatives. So in this particular case here, yung option niya dito is uh, trade credits and then corporate bonds, gold stocks, and then we have the construction loans. Okay, and then dit, ito yung, this are the interest return for trade credit, credits, you have 7%, and then so on and so forth. And then the maximum investment in millions, this is 1 million, uh, 2.5 million, and then 1.5, so on and so forth. Okay, so ito yung problem natin. So let's try to read the problem. Ano ba yung gusto niyang mangyari? So for example, the ICT, International City Trust, invest in short-term credits. Okay, so ito na yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. Yan. And then to incur, encourage a diversified portfolio, the board of directors has placed the limits of the amount that can be committed by any type of investment. So ICT, ito. So ICT has 5 million available for immediate investment. So basically, the total investment na pwedeng invest ng ICT will be 5 million. And then we just to do two things. Number one, maximize the return on investment in two months, and then satisfy the diversification requirements set by the board of directors. So basically, i-allocate lang natin itong $5 million natin dito, guys, with this, ito, with trade credits, the corporate bonds, gold stocks, and then construction loans. We are going to maximize the return, okay, the rate of return, but we are going also to follow the guidelines, anong sabi ba ng board? We have to diversify the diversification requirements set by the board. Ano ba yung diversification requirements set by the board? Dito yata yun. So the specifics investment dito are as follows. Ito na yung kanina. In addition, the board specifies, oh, ito. The board specifies that at least 5%, uh, 55% of the funds invested must be in gold stocks okay, and corporate loans. Okay, ito guys ha. Gold stock and corporate loans. So gold stocks, can I color this one? Gold stocks and the construction loans. Oh. So yan yung first requirement ng board natin. And then, no less than 15% must be invested in trade credits. So no less than Okay, so it should be at least 15%, no less than 15%. So how are we going to do the, how are we going to do the objective function? So basically, our goal here is to maximize, diba? according to the problem here, we are going to maximize the rate of return of investment. So basically, when you will be working with your objective function, ang titingnan nyo dito guys is yung rate of return. 
Ito yung rate of return focus natin dito. So we're going to represent this one. This, the trade credits will be our X1, okay? And then corporate bonds, X2, gold stock, X3, and then the construction loans will be X4. So if we're going to do that one, so X1 will be the dollars invested in trade credits. Okay, X2 will be in corporate bonds, X3, gold stocks, X4, construction loans. Basic. Okay, basic natin yan. And then, since ito yung X1 natin, since X1 natin, amount dollars invested in trade credits. So if you're going to add this one, X1, X2, X3, X4, it should equal to 5 million. Kasi yan yung naspe uh, specified by the problem. Okay, specified by the problem na 5 million. Okay, so this is import. Ah, so blah, blah, blah. So sa ano bang next niya? Okay, and then sa objective function, so ito na yung uh, variables natin, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Okay, so ito yun. Sir, saan galing itong 0.7? Saan galing itong 0.11? Take note guys that in this particular problem here, we want to maximize the rate of return. So that is why in this particular table here, ang titingnan natin is the interest return. So 7%, that is 0.07, nandyan yan for the X1, the rate of return for the X1. And then this one here, the rate of return for the corporate bonds. And then this one here, the 0.019, that's the corporate return for gold stocks. And then this one here for the construction loans, the X4 here, okay, the rate of return. Next is, we have, so we are going to do it, ito yung objective function natin, under or subject to these following constraints. Okay, take note guys, tapos na tayo. Okay, we already use this column here. Now, we are, how are we going to use this maximum investment? So take note now that for the trade credits, at, at most, at most 1 million lang yung pwede nating invest. That is the maximum investment for this particular investment or the trade credits, 1 million. So that is why the trade credits, which is the X1, should be less than 1 million. So in mathematical form, it should be this one here. X1, okay, space, 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 para madaling makita, it should be less than, so less than 1 million. And then X2, less than 2.5 million, 2, mil, uh, 2, mil, uh, 2 million 500. And then this one here, 1.5 uh, 1. million. And then X4, 1,800, uh, 1 million 800. Okay? And then, oh, dito na. Sir, pandamay, sir. Asa manigikan nga problem? Asa manigikan na, 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 na equation? So this is the objective function. Okay? Objective function. I-highlight natin to. Sorry guys, uh, di na ko pwede magamit akong iPad karo Next meeting na lang. Gamit sa kumisis. Okay? So this one here, that this is the objective function. And then ito, na portion here, ito yung mga constraints natin. Second constraints. Okay? And then this one here is the third constraint. This is the fourth constraint. Okay, question ba? As early as now, can we solve this problem? Pwede na kasi we already have uh, four, four unknowns, x1, x2, x3, and then we have four equations here. Pero kulang yan. Okay, probably mali yung solution pa rin natin. But at, at least, nasa tamang daan na tayo. <laughs> okay, so there is another constraint here. Ito yung nasa table natin. But yung board natin for to, 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 to satisfy the diversification of the portfolio that set by the board so that we have to follow this one here. Sabi dito, 55% of the funds, okay, the board, speci the board specifies that at least, eto, at least 55% of the funds must be invested in golds and stocks. So it means that the golds and stocks here, X3 and X4, okay, take note, ha? X3 plus X4, ha? the gold and stocks, gold stocks and construction, X3 plus X4 should be at least, okay, at least, so it should be, kung at least siya, it should be less than or greater than or equal. It should be at least man. Okay, so it should be greater than, okay, greater than or equal, okay, greater than or equal to the 55%, okay, to the 55% of the total investment. So the total investment here should be 5 million, but we cannot do that. Na ilagay mo dito 5 million. I but I think you can also do that. Okay, let's try to experiment later. Later, So, but in this particular case here, para makita natin, so 55% of the total investment. So in this particular case here, 55% of the total X1, X2, X3, X4. So ito yung, andito yan. This is the gold stocks and then this is the construction loan here. 
Okay? X3 plus X4 should be greater than or equal kasi yung problem natin specified. It should be at least, so greater than, at least is great at greater than or equal, at most should be less than or equal. So in this particular case here, greater than or equal to the 55%, okay, 55% of the total investment, okay, 55% of the total investment, which is equal to X1, X2, X3, and X4, okay, X1, X2, X3, and X4, okay, so, ah, sige, sige. Sige, kaya lang yun, guys. X1, X2, X3, and X4. But later on, we are going to we are going to uh, transfer this one on the left side of our equation here. So, okay, sulat na lang na to eh. Uh, saan man na to ni? I think pwede dito. Okay. So, dito na lang. So, ibig sabihin, guys, Zero, diba? We are going to distribute in one. Sa algebra natin, we are going to distribute the 0 0.55 here to x1. Okay? So that is why we will have negative 0 0.55. Okay? Negative 0 0.55. Okay? Try to imagine na ilipat mo dun sa kabila. Negative 0 0.55 x1. Okay? And then yung x2 natin, distribute mo yung 0 0.55. And then x2, then ilipat mo sa kabila pa rin. So negative pa rin. So negative. Okay, negative, I, I think yun doon yung makita. You will use the word. Okay lang guys. E-word file ko na lang. Okay? So, dito tayo guys ha. Zoom in lang natin yan. So, uh, yung X1 niya dito, di ba yung X1 na ito, X1 0.55. So, basically, ang mangyayari niyan ngayon, X3 plus X4. Okay? It should be less than, uh, greater than. Distribute mo yan. So, that should be 0.55 okay, X1 plus okay, plus 0.55x2 plus 0.55x3 plus again 0.55x4. Now, ngayon, ang gusto mo ngayong mangyari dito is ilipat mo tong x1, x2, x3, x4 mo dun sa left side natin. So that is why pag nalipat mo tong x1 mo dito sa kabila, since we don't have x1 here, so it will become negative 0.55x1 Okay. And then yung x2 natin, positive siya dito. If we're going to transfer this one to the negative side, may area negative pa rin. Ah, magiging negative. Negative 0.55x2. Okay. And then the x3 here, we have 0.55. But we have 1 here. Yung x1, ah, x3 natin dito. So it should be 1x3 minus, kasi mag, sulat na lang natin. Eh. Sige, x3. And then yung negative 0.55x3 Okay, and then plus natin dito plus the x4 minus the uh, 0.55x4 And then, retain natin yung uh, greater than and then 0 na kasi nalipat na natin sa kabila yung, yung iba Now, if we're going to simplify this one here as is ito Okay, as is yan Okay, and then yung x3 natin dito, we have 1 here, 1 minus 0 0.55, that should be positive uh, 0 0.45. 0 0.45, aba? 5, 10, carry 1, 45 x3. Okay, and then plus 0 0.45 x4, less than 0. So, ito na yung final equation natin. So, we have to take note of this pagdating natin dun sa XLQM natin. Okay? And then, yan na yan. And the next constraint natin dito is we have here. So, ano ba ito? 
tapos na tayo dito. And then, dito, ano ba yung next constraint ng sabi ng board natin dito? Sabi nila that and that no less than 15%, oh, sabi niya dito, no less than 15% must be invested in trade credits. Oh, no less than 10%. Uh, no less than 15%. Okay, so no less than 15%, ito pa rin, no less than, so it means that above 15% should be greater than. So this one here, 0 0.55, our X1, which is the trade credits, should be greater than, okay, greater than or equal to the 15% of the total uh, invested value natin dito, which is the X1, X2, X3, and X4. Okay, so in this particular case here, matamata na lang natin to guys, kaya naman to matamata. Okay? Anong isang equation dito? We have the x1 here and then we have the negative 0.15 x1 here. So basically, 1 minus 0.15 should be negative 0.85. Okay? Negative 0.85, that should be x1. And then the x2, na uh, madistribute mo na yung uh, 0.15 and then ilipat mo sa kabila, that should be 0.15 x2. Okay? And then yung x3 mo, 0.15, this one here, 0.15 Distribute mo sa x3, so 0.15 x3, lipat mo sa kabila, magiging negative. So negative 0.15 x3, okay? Same with the x4. Okay, minus the 0.15 of the x4. Okay, and then that should be greater than 0. And then, so ito na yung, is our six constraint. Okay, and then we have this last constraint here uh, stated in the problem that x1, x2, x3, and x4 should be uh, less than or equal to 5 million kasi 5 million yung pwede natin invest And then this is the non-negativity constraints. So basically, uh -huh. so basically if we're going to use the Excel QM here, kasi marami na to, eh. Alangan i-graph pa nini mo, makuya pa ka-graph ane. So basically, we have four variables in this problem here, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Okay, and then the number of constraints that we have here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7. Okay, pero na-simplify na natin tong uh, fifth at saka 6 into uh, this form here para mas madali. Okay, so let's try to solve it using Excel QM. So linear programming, mabas. So... Dili kay klaro, no? I-zoom in nyo na lang later, guys. Basically, type mo lang yung ICT. And then, ang tanong na naman dito, the number of constraints. We have 7. Okay? Tagay mo lang dyan, 7. And then, the number of variables that we have in this case here, we have 4, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And then, we want to maximize the rate of return. So, we have to maximize here. Okay? And then, just click OK. Okay? And then, we have here, maximize. So, what is the objective function again? And zoom in lang natin para makita ninyo. Okay. So, we want to maximize. What are we going to maximize? We are going to maximize the 0 0.07 of the X1. And then, we are going to 0 0.11 of the X2. And then, 0 0.19. Dito, guys, ha, sa objective function natin. Dito sa objective function natin. And we have the 0 0.15 here. Okay, and then for the constraint, the first constraint here, we have X1. So in this kind of problem here, X1 lang. So, diba, in our algebra, if this is the variable here, we have the numerical and then the literal variable. For, for example, in this particular case here, wala kang nakitang uh, numerical variable, so ibig sabihin may 1 dyan. So in this case here, yung X1 natin, lagyan natin ng 1. And you can write 0 here, and then 0, 0. So it would be better kung wala na. And then, uh, less than or equal to 1 million, Okay, so it is advisable that you're going to write in a million. One, two, three. So be careful with the number of zeros that you're going to input in the Excel. Ano, accountancy man mo, dali, rakay ni sa inyo ha, pag-check. And then, one ka ulit dito for the X2, the second constraint here. Okay, and then yung limit ng X2 natin will be 2.5 million. So, two, five, one, two, three. Okay, and then next natin dito, the third constraint here, the, net, the third constraint is the X3. So, 1 ka dito sa X3. And then, 
we have here one five one two three okay and then for the x4 here the limit of the x4 is 1,800. One, two, three. Okay. And then we need to input the the fifth. Ah, so na, na simplify na natin to. So this is the simplified. Ah, yan na yung simplified na constraint natin. So input lang natin yan dito. Okay. So the six constraint here. So you can title the constraint dito, guys. Ah. You can change the, the, the words here. So we can change here. That is 0 0.55. Okay. And then dito then negative 0 0.55. And then 0 0.45. And then we have here 0 0.45. Don't forget the zero, but you have to change this one here. It should be greater than kasi at least man yun. Okay. Greater than zero. Okay. And then the third constraint that we have here are the, the six constraint 0 0.85 okay zero negative 0 0.15 please don't forget the negative sign so very important wait 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 0 0.85 balik lang natin guys ha hindi it should be positive it should be positive kasi may one kaman dito one 1x1 one here. So 1 and then negative. So it should be positive here. So positive to dapat. Okay. 0 0.85. Okay. And then. So it should, this should be positive here. And then. Dito sa kabila. Negative 0 0.15 pa rin. And then negative 0 0.15. And then which is. Uh greater than zero okay and then the last constraint should be the total amount invested which is the x1 x2 x3 and x4 should be less than or equal to 5 billion okay and then i think that's it and then just click you double check lang natin 0 0.17 uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.11, 0 0.19, 0 0.15, 1 million, 1.8, and then 0 0.55, 0 0.55 negative, and then 0 0.45, 0 0.45, 0, and then greater than, ito 0 0.15, ilipat mo sa kabila. 0 0.85 and then negative 0 0.15 0 0.15 and then 0 and then the last constraint will be this one here okay and then let's try to click this solve click mo lang ito so that is why yung paulit ulit kung sinasabi sa inyo guys as long as you you can have you have the right uh, objective and then the constraint mathematical equation equation madali nang isolve yung linear programming problem natin kasi we can use this uh, excel qm here Then, my lumabas dito. Scenarios, okay. Okay, mo lang yan. So, we have uh, 750,000, I think this is 1.5 million, and then this is 1.8. Let's check dito sa answer sa libro. Ano answer niya? Wait, wait, wait. So, ito. Yan. 750. The 950. Uh, this one. 750, 950. The 1.5 and then the 1.8. And the total return natin will be 712,000. So, this is 712,000. So, ganun lang kadali, guys. Question. Question or clarification about this topic? Question, guys? Clarification? Frank? Hello, sir. Yes, Frank. Uh, not so far, no, man, sir. 
Dali lang, no? Uh, I just suck it so well, sir, pero at least my con, no? my software, no, sir, ba? Excel, oh, yeah. Excel QM. Yeah, it's a good thing na may Excel QM na, guys. So, madali na lang. So, I will be uploading this one. I think I will just upload the link kung saan ko ito nakuha. Kaya para at least isa-isa lang, dali lang ninyo. And you are, if you are using Windows, so at, at least ma-download nyo yung Windows. And then, you try to explore the QM for Windows. Yung pwede nyo i-install. Pero, okay pa rin kung Excel lang. Okay, so ganito lang kadali guys. And then you can come up with this answer here. So, isang problem pa. Ito, uh, ito yung isang problem natin. Yung isang problem pa natin dito guys is ito, track loading problem. So we have to discuss this problem here kasi may trick siya dito sa dulo. And then I really like this one kasi we have to use the other another problem here. Kasi yung question natin dito guys, okay. So what if yung answer, one of the answers here will be decimal places. Okay, what if 1.5? Okay, 1.5. And then for example, if you're going to uh, optimize the number of tables and you're going to optimize the number of chairs. Okay, and then sabi doon, we are... To produce this one, you are going to need 1.5. Okay, 1.5 chair. So, paano yan? May, may 0.5 ka. Okay, working in progress. So, pwede ba yun? May working in progress ka sa solution mo na hindi naman po pwede makonvert yung working in progress mo into a profit. So, paano natin yan i-address? So, this attract problem here will illustrate us how are we going to solve this type of problem na yung dapat yung answer natin will be an integer. Okay? So, yan. So, sir, uh, if you will be giving us a quiz, kung sabay mas maayong mga advisor, ha, ha, advise us, ano bang dapat gawin namin para mahasa mi para mo dako gita ang score sa quiz. So, basically, in a linear programming problem, guys, it's very important, di ba, paulit-ulit kung sinasabi sa inyo, na ang pinaka-importante lang dito is to come up with the right objective function and then the right constraints equation. Pag nakuha mo na yun, automatic, okay na yan. Okay? So, Paano niyo how are you going to kuan how are you going to master this kind of skill na maka-create kaagad ng nung mga equations na yon in a couple of minutes so kailangan mong mag-solve ng problem so dili pwede na eto lang problem mo and prepare ka na sa quiz no as much as possible since we already have an excel qm here try to solve some problem here na nandito sa baba okay nandito sa baba may may problem naman dito by the end of the chapter i think even yata Try to solve the even problems there. Okay, create an objective function, create the constraint equation, and then use this Excel QM here. And then dun sa dulo ng libro natin, may answers naman of solve problem. So try to check kung tama ba yung answer mo na nandun. So kung na tama siya, so ibig sabihin, the, 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 siya tawag na, the solution or the objective function or the constraints that you had is tama yung mga na-formulate mo. Okay, so that is how are you going to train yourself to create an objective function? Okay, and then take note, guys. Ah, linear programming pangalang yung na discuss natin. But this is, I tell you, this is very useful when you will be working in in big firms or manufacturing industries in the future. Okay, so basically, when you will be taking your masters in the future, masters in business administration, you will really appreciate this uh, this tool here. Oh, you will have a, a review naman po. You will have a quantitative management. Quantitative management yung, yung title nito pagdating nyo sa master sa MBA. But, yan. Yeah, it's a good thing as early as now, you can come, you you have the fundamentals of how are we going to solve those types of problems. Ah, okay, linear programming problems pa yan. Pag may makita ka o marinig kang uh, maximization or minimization problem, try to think it na pwede ba siyang i-apply using or solve this problem in a linear programming problem and uh, solving. And then later on, try to use this Excel QM, formulate the constraint, formulate the objective function, and then tingnan natin ha, kung pwede ba siyang masolve. Okay? Kung masolve ma, edi recommend to your immediate supervisor. Okay, so this type of problem here, meron pang isang problem. Let's try to solve this quickly. So sabi dito, uh, there is a truck loading problem. Okay, so logistics na ito na problem. Okay, and then uh, items of the load, uh, maximize the value on load ship. And as an example, we consider the Goodman shipping as a right on the So one of his trucks with a capacity of uh, 10,000 pounds. So basically, that particular container he, there, 10,000 pounds lang yung pwede natin makarga. It is about to be loaded. So awaiting shipment at the follows. So we have six items na nandun na support. Okay? So yung, eto yung values natin. And then these are the, the weight and then the pounds. 
So, we are going to create a maximized combination of all of those things. Okay? I-combine natin to. Ano ba yung possible combination natin? We are going to combine the 1, 2, 3, or something like that to have a maximum uh, profit. I think profit kay kasi value man to. Or value. We are going to maximize that particular value. Okay? So, pwede po. Pwede po. Okay? This is the mano mano way. Mano mano way. Combine. You're going to try to combine 8,000 pa sinin. And you try paiguan lang ni mo ng 10,000 pounds. Okay? Combine mo yung, uh, let's say, the 3,000 here, and then you have the 3,500 here, we have the 3,500, and then try po ni mo combine ni, combine, and the 3,700, you don't have 2,500 here. So, stand alone, stand alone. So, basically, you can also do that. But the problem here is okay lang kung ganito lang sana yung problem natin. What if yung problem natin dito, mas marami pa siya? And then yung items natin dito, dito isa-isa lang to. The assumption here or the premise here is that item number one is an item one ka lang. Item two is lang yan. Item three is lang yan. So on and so forth. Pero paano kung that particular item, tatlo sila? How are you going to uh, allocate that one? And okay lang kung genius kay ka. But basically, kung genius kay ka, you will also be using mathematical equations to solve this problem here. So, para sa ito, ah, ng mga management science ng mga estudyante, we are going to use the power of our Excel, Excel QM. Okay, so how are we going to solve this type of problem here? So, very simple. So, create an objective function. But our goal here is to, what? To maximize the value. So, alam na natin, okay. So, we have to, we have to allocate this item here, di ba? We have one, two, three. So, we can think that this is the X1, the X2, the X3, X4, X5, X6. Okay, and then basically, we want to maximize it, this value here. So, we can try to imagine the, the objective function that we will be having in this type of problem. So, we have maximize equals 22,500 X1 and then plus. Kasi we want to maximize that value there. Okay, 24,000 X2. That's the objective function there. Okay, and then yung constraint natin dito, pounds. And then this is only the maximum here. So, we, we are going to identify... 7,500x1, 7,500x2, so on and so forth, 3,500 plus 3,500x6 should be less than 10,000. Okay? So, parang ganun yung itsura niyan. So, basically, oh, gina-imagine pa lang nato, guys. If you can do this as early as now, as early as now, so maganda yan, maganda yan. If you can imagine that one as early as now, it would be better. Pag dili pa gani, you try to solve it. Uh, you, 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 you try to write it. Okay? And then, improve improve by solving more and more problems. So basically, ito yung sabi ko kanina. Okay, we are going to maxima, maximize the load value. So ito, X1, X2, X3. X1, IX2, X3, those are the items in na cargo natin na pwede natin ikarga. Subject to this constraint here. Okay, so this is the pounds. So 7,500 X1. Okay, take to the X1 is yung number na pwede natin ilagay. So 7,500, pwede yung 1 or 0. Okay, 1, 0, binary yan. So, 7,500 here, uh, ganyan. It should be, the total for all of this should be less than uh, less than 10,000 pounds. So, basically, 1, 0, 1, 0 ka lang din ni guys. We're going to use the 1, 0, 1, 0 to come up with a value uh, na dili siya mulang pas ng 10,000 pounds. So, basically, that's the goal. So, hindi na natin problema yan. Let the computer do the work. Okay? But, ito yung sabi ko kanina. If you are going to write this one as yung objective function natin, the maximize the load. And then subject to this constraint here, we have six variables here. We have six unknowns in this problem. So we cannot solve this problem by only using this, by subjecting this one to only this constraint here. Okay, take note again, the basic rule of algebra, the number of unknowns should be the number of, uh, the number of unknowns should be the number of equations. Okay, so in this case here, the number of unknowns, we have six. So as much as possible, we should, in equality man to, so we should have at least six constraints or six equations to solve this problem here. Okay, so meron tayong kulang. So anong kulang natin? So kailangan natin isipin kung anong kulang natin dito. So basically, ang kulang natin na specify natin dito, as what I've told you a while ago, that yung six items natin doon, isa-isa lang yon. Yung value natin dito, hindi pwedeng lumampas ng dalawa. Okay, hindi dapat uh, lumampas ng isa. So, ibig sabihin niyan, you have the X1, okay, should be less than or equal to 1. X2 should be less than or equal to 1. X3 should be less than or equal to so on and so forth. So, basically, and then we have the non-negativity constraint. Now, so, we have six variables. Okay, we have six variables. And then we have how many constraints? We have 1, 2, 3, 6, 7. So, we have 7 constraints here. So, 
go to QM again, then we are going to do the linear programming. Okay. And then type natin dito, we have the loading. Okay. And then the number of constraints that we have here, sabi ko kanina, we have seven. Seven ba yun? Six, seven. And then the number of variables that we have is six. Okay. So constraint is seven. The number of variables is six. Okay, and then we want to maximize the, the load. Okay, we want to maximize the load. Seven so and constraints and then six. Okay. Then input mo lang yung value mo. So that yung beauty ng uh, linear programming gets is as long as you can come up with the objective function and then the constraints equations, madali na lang yan isolve. Okay, and then maximize, we're going to maximize the 22,500, okay, the 24,000, the 8,000, the 9,500, the 11,500, and then the 9,750. Okay, so we're going to maximize that one under this constraint, yung constraint natin dito, yung timbang nila. Okay, so you have 7,500 and then again 7,500, 3,000. Okay, and then we have your 3,500, and then we have your 4,000, and then we have your 3,500. 7,575, 3,000, 3, 5, 4,000, 3,500. Yeah, and then it should be uh, less than. To 10,000. 1, 2, 3. Okay. And then, yung mga constraints natin dito sa baba, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, it should be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. It should be and less than 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Less than, less than, less than lahat. And then, we have the non-negativity constraint. Okay na yan. So, naplastada mo na, gawin mo lang, run the Excel solver. Okay, so nandito sa baba na yung This one, okay. And then nandito na sa baba. So basically, according to the suggestion here, the maximum value na pwede natin ikarga is 3,000 at uh, 31,500. So karga tayo ng X2. So X2 natin dito is the item number 2. Okay, valued at 24,000. Okay? And then, the problem here is eto. 0 0.33. Okay? 0 0.33 of X1. This item number 1. Diba? As, as what I've told you, hindi pwede to. Hindi pwede na i-chop-chop mo muna yan. I-chop-chop mo yung item number 1 mo. Lang, kunin mo yung 33% yan. And then, yun yung ikarga mo. Hindi po pwede yan. Okay? So, if I'm going to change this one, na hindi po pwede yan, so, Kunin natin itong 0.33 and then 1 lang yan. So, pwede natin, value natin dito is 24,000 only. Kung 24,000 lang yan, pwede tayo, hindi yan optimum value. Kung hindi yan magiging optimum value kasi we can try to combine another value here na mas mataas pa siya ng, uh, ng value here, weight pounds, mas mataas pa siya kaysa sa makakuha ka ng 24,000. So, to solve this one here, we're going to use another copy. Try to copy this one para Madali na lang natin itong masolve. Pwede ba? Yan. So, para mas madali yung buhay natin dito, kasi in some case, in this particular case here, hindi po pwede na bungkig yung isang value natin dito. Okay? Although yung maximum value natin dito na nakuha, it will be uh, 31,500, but the solution is not feasible. 
Okay? So, what are we going to do here? Kasi kailangan natin ng exact value or integer in this particular case here. So, ang gamitin natin is not the linear programming but itong uh, integer and mix integer programming. I-click mo lang yan. It will be created. Okay? And then, ulitin lang natin to. Uh, anong problem na to? Load. And then, the number of constraints that we have, 7. Number of variables is 6. Then, we're going to maximize. Press OK. And then, may lumabas na ganyan. Let's try to paste. Baka pwede. Pwede sa sana. Ayaw niya. Click natin dito. Copy. Paste na natin, guys, para mas madali yung buhay natin. Pwede ba? Yun, pwede. So, same problem pa rin natin dito, pero ang ginamit na natin is integer and mixed programming. Okay, so basically, the result here will be integer. Okay, hindi siya decimal place. Basically, how are we going to do that? Same pa rin, input-input mo yung constraint at saka objective function natin dito and then just run the Excel solver. Hmm. Oh, medyo bumagal yung computer natin kasi we are using the Google Meet. And then I'm opening a lot of apps. Ayan, wabas na. And then okay. So, okay na. And then tingnan natin sa baba. Bakit wala answer? Sir, wala yung value ang imong right hand side, sir. Ah! Wala din na ito na appeal of copy. Mungo siya yung value. So, it should be... Sana yan. Thank you. The other one. It should be... Paste. Yun. And then try to solve again. Ay, 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 ay. Tama ba? Less than lahat. Yeah, less than lahat. Less than low, then it should be less than one, less than one, less than one. Hmm. Yan. Okay. Mas na. And then, tingnan natin dito sa baba. Okay. Yan. So, we are going to load 1x3, 1x4, and then 1x6. 1x3. Okay, ito yung mga i-load natin. 1x3. Ayan. X3, X4, and X6. X3, X4, and X6. So basically, ha, dali rin mong kaya tanahon. Maskin pag kuhan, sir, dili ka magamit ang kuhan, linear programming, dali rin mong kaya ito makita. Of course, given nga, 6 items lang yan, di ba? We have 3, 5 here, plus 3, 5, that is 7,000, plus 3,000, 10,000. Exactly 10,000. And then they're going to have the optimized value here. Plus mo lang yan. And then the value here is 27,250. But that is not the optimized value. That is only the value if it is an integer. Okay? Take note that 33,000 yung optimized value natin dito. If we can chop-chop this uh, X1 here. So 31,500. 
Okay? So, ang gagawin natin dito, guys, assignment nyo, I will be preparing your assignment uh, later on. So, I will be asking you to, kuan, mas marami na yan. Kasi sam, tatlo sa assignment nyo previous dati ay yung previous assignment nyo, three items yun, then you have to solve the graphical uh, graphical solving. So, eto, mas marami ng konti, but you are only required, you are only required to have the uh, objective function and then the constraint and then yeah, kahit yun na, the, the objective function, the constraint, not necessarily a table format mo pa, and then the answer using the this Excel QM that you have here. Just screen capture this one. Okay, screen screenshot mo lang yan and then you paste it in your word. Okay? Questions? Clarifications? Sir, questions, sir. Yes, Riz. Go ahead. Nga na ganit one ang value sa right-hand side sa x1, x2, ganyan. Kaya ito, kasi yung assumption ng this particular problem here na yung item 1 natin, isa lang. Okay? Item 2 natin, isa lang. So, ibig sabihin, isang item 1, isang item 2, isang item 3. So, the values that you are going to load in this particular track here should be less than or equal to 1. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Confusing mangod, guys. Kaya ang ibutang mangod niya din is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, probably, makaisip tayo na this is 1 item, 2 items, 3 items. But, if you're going to read this problem here, isa-isa lang ito. Yun, yun, Riz. Good. Okay, and then another question, sir. Ano galing na kay 1, 1, 1, 1, put gani din sir? Kasi pag 0 ang imong ibutang din eh, you, you will not be able to represent the x1 here. For example, in this line here. So, di ba kailangan natin ng x1 is less than 1. So, pag 0 yan, so less than 1 lang ka. So, walang representation ng 1. So, take note ha, bakit may 1? Kasi this is 0 here. 0 yan, 0, 0, 0. So, 0 times x2, 0. 0 times x3, 0. So, 0 yan lahat. And then, 1 times x1. So, that is we have x1 here. x1 is less than 1. Sa right-hand side. Okay? Okay ba? Any other questions? Other any questionaries? Wala na? So, again, I will be, uh, after this class, I will be uploading this lecture. Okay? And then, I will be sending, giving you an assignment. So, palugit ko sa inyo para hindi masyadong maipit tayo sa assignment kaysa you are only given two weeks to finish the assignment. So, I hope that as early as now, tapusin nyo na yung assignments. And then, kung gusto nyo yung nakuog score sa inyong quiz, try to answer the assignments kahit hindi nyo pa matapos yun. Kahit at least 50% of the assignments, try to answer all of the, uh, the 50% para at least may idea na tayo on what are the things na lalabas dun sa quiz natin this coming Tuesday. Tuesday natin will be quiz. Yan yun ang gawin natin, guys. Quiz, lecture, quiz, lecture, quiz, lecture. Okay? And then I decided na napag-isip-isip ko na I will not be giving as a final requirement if... All of us will agree that I will not be giving a research paper for our class, but we will have some alternative way to check your understanding about this course. Maybe we will do uh, oral presentation pa rin, but uh, you are not required to present uh, research. So probably yung nasa isip ko is uh, I will be giving you a random kuan, a random problem. Okay, bunot-bunot tayo, prepare ako ng random problem, and then I would like you to discuss on what tool are you going to use. Since... Yung goal naman natin dito is applied management science. For example, if I'll be giving you this type of problem, so I'm going to ask you on how are you going to solve. If you are, if you are the manager for this particular company, for example, this truck loading, uh, this, if you are Steven uh, Goodman, how are you going to solve this problem using the tools that we discussed this semester? So parang ganun pa rin. Okay? Ganun lang. Para at least, uh, delete na kayo mo stress sa inyong research. But uh, that is still... Uh, TBA to be arranged. Okay, we will discuss that one later on. Any questions, clarifications?